Yes, today is the first full day uh, in which people can actually go and pay their respects, uh, have a moment of reflective silence and file past the coffin uh, of Her Late Majesty, Queen Elizabeth II. What they're saying is that they feel that it's important that after her 70-year reign and a life of sacrifice, of duty, they want to go and show their respect, their affection, and it's interesting, there aren't lots of children, but there are some children. And it's always interesting to hear why the parent or the grandparent has brought them. Um, and they say that this is important, to pass on that uh, knowledge, really, of the role of the monarchy in the United Kingdom. So the queue, we understand, is two miles long. It goes for anybody who knows the various famous bridges in, here in London. We are near Lambeth Bridge. Um, of course, you see behind me uh, the... Parliament, where indeed uh, Her Late Majesty is uh, lying in state till Monday morning, in fact, 6.30 uh, a.m. before her state funeral that will start at 11 a.m. that will be attended by uh, 500 or so heads of government, heads of countries, the U.S. President, the French President, Emmanuel Macron, Jacinda Ardern, uh, European royalty and more. So a very complex logistical security operation as I try and speak over the police sirens that are going. Um, a lot of provisions made for these people, Jeannie, here, where they can step out of... Uh, they've got wristbands, so they can step out if they need to, to go to the loo, to the uh, toilet. They can... Uh, their special disabled access. They can go and get a cup of tea and come back in. But it's all very good-natured. And the people who we've spoken to who have come out from seeing it say they suddenly get really taken over by the silence and the quietness, and they think about her life and they think about their lives. Benedict, uh, the Queen's Coffin will be open 24 hours a day, as you said, to mourners until that funeral Monday. In the meantime, this is actually a much quieter day for King Charles. Yes, it is a much quieter day for King Charles III. Of course, he acceded the throne the moment that his beloved mother died last Thursday, 8th of September, uh, around 4.30 p.m., announced about two hours later, as we covered the breaking news here on France 24. And um, it has been an absolute flurry of uh, events, of speeches, of tour of the nations. He's uh, obviously been to Scotland. Uh, he's been to Northern Ireland. Uh, he's been, of course, here and proclaimed king here. That, that ceremony, the speech in, uh, in Parliament itself. But today, uh, we learnt that he went, he's gone since last night to Gloucestershire, his home in uh, Highgrove. And it is going to be a quieter, more reflective day. It's been an absolutely intense uh, time, really, since then. Also, interestingly, his uh, next in line to the throne, Prince William, now Prince of Wales, along with his wife, uh, the Princess of Wales, Kate. I understand they're going to be looking at floral tributes uh, that have been left outside uh, Sandringham, Sandringham Castle, uh, and that's in Norfolk. Uh, also, the Princess Royal, Princess Anne, will be visiting Scotland, I understand, to meet representatives of organisations that the Queen was patron of in Scotland. So, uh, some royal activity and, and public uh, events with them, but for King Charles III, I think a much deserved rest today, away from the cameras and allowed to be with his private grief. He's lost his mother.